class we're going to talk about another statistical test which is the Q test. Similar to a G test, we also use it to be able to identify whether an outlier is going to be rejected or accepted. But maybe one thing we need to know about the Q test is that normally we use it for small values, like for small data set, not a lot. So how do you deal with we have said you are identifying an outlier. Let's say you are performing a titration and you, are, you have got a tight rant. You know a tight rant is that substance that is in the burette that you are trying to pour into the analyte. So here is your burette and your analyte is going to be here in the conical flask. So let's say the volume was first at zero there. And then when you start opening the tap and here you have got your analyte where you have also put the indicator. As you start pulling the titrant into the analyte, the color will start changing, right? You are reaching the end point when the color is changing. So at that point, let's say you had poured and then the volume reached here and let's say that was four meals. So when you perform the first titration, you used four mules. Because you don't just perform one titration, you get that value as the tight the, the tighter value. You do it again, maybe four times or five times. Let's say for the second time you got 3.95 as your volume that you use for the tight run. For the second time, let's say you got 4.1. For the third time, let's say you got 3.2 nine five again and then another time you got five so you see these values four is close to 3.95 is close to 4.1 is close to 3.95 but five is way too much so we call this guy as an outlier so you want to identify whether this outlier is maybe just because of some mistake that you've made you can accept it or it is too much you reject it so you can use the q test so let's use examples to be able to answer or to understand more about the q test for the following data set determine whether the outlier will be accepted or rejected at 95 percent confidence so the first thing that you want to do for a G, for a q test is that you want to identify to arrange your values in ascending order so the smallest here you can see that is the smallest is 1.1 followed by 1.2 and then 1.3 and then 2.0. So identify the outlier. Which one is the outlier? It is 2 because the others are close to each other. 2.0 is the outlier. So the first thing that you want to find is known as a gap for a Q test and we give it the symbol A. And the gap is given by the absolute value of the value that you are suspecting. So suspected value minus the nearest value to the suspected value. And so this is going to be the suspected value or outlier is 2.0. The nearest value to the outlier, you can see is this one. That's 1.3. And so this is going to give us 0 0.7. It's absolute. So even when you found a negative number, discard the negative sign. The next thing that you want to find when it comes to a Q test is what we call the gap. Sorry, we found the gap, the range. And the range, you give it a symbol W. And this is given by highest value minus the lowest value. You know that's range, right? Highest minus lowest. So the highest value is the same value that we are suspecting in this case 2.0 and then the lowest is a 1.1 and this is going to give us 0 0.9. So the next thing that you want to do for this test is you want to find the Q calculated, the calculated Q value. So Q calculated is given by the gap divided by the range. 
and the gap in this case that's 0 0.7 the range is 0 0.9 and this is going to give us 0 0.778 besides this you want also to find the q tabulated what is the q value on the table and the table will be given so we are dealing with 95% confidence. 95% is equivalent to 0 0.05 if you go on the table. So again, you need to also find out how many degrees of freedom are we dealing with or how many values do we have? We have got 1, 2, 3, 4. So when n is equal to 4, then your degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom is given by n minus 1. So degrees of freedom is 4 minus 1, which is a 3. So you go on the Q-test table. So you can see for this table, we've been given the number of observations and not the degrees of freedom. So please be careful with that. Here is the number of observations. We had four observations and we are dealing with 95% confidence. Can you see the value that we are finding there? That's 0 0.8 so that's 0 0.829. So now using this one to identify our calculated value and our tabulated value. So we say Q calculated and then Q tabulated. Which one is bigger than the other? So you can see the one that we have calculated is 0 0.7. It is small. So it is less than the one that we have tabulated. Every time what we have calculated is small than what we have tabulated. It means that there is no significant difference between the outlier and the other values. And so the value is going to be accepted. So this value is going to be accepted. Why? There is no significant difference between that value and the other values. But if the calculated value is bigger than the one on the table, then that value is going to be rejected. Let's use another example. The following set of chloride determination on a separate aliquot. Aliquot, these are just a portion of a bigger thing. So the following set of chloride determination on separate aliquots of a put serum were reported. You know, serum is that liquid part of blood, 103, 106, 107, and 114. One value appears as aspect. Determine if it can be ascribed to accidental error at 95% confidence. Is it an accidental error? If it is an accidental error, it means that you are going to accept it. It's just an error by accident, not because of your, maybe your, inexperience or a problem in instrument or such. Remember we mentioned that when if you followed the video on the Q test, on the G test, we have got two types of error. I've got a determinant error which also called a systemic error or systematic error. And these errors, the problem is maybe because of me misreading or I have got inexperience with what I'm dealing with or maybe there is a faulty with the instrument. But indeterminant errors those you can't determine them they are also known as random errors they are always part of an experiment you can't avoid them maybe because there is a, a a change in the environmental conditions and that affects your readings all right so again for these values they are already arranged in ascending order you can see 103 106 107 and 114 so let's determine our gap. So how do you find the gap? Thank you so much. So the gap is which is given A is given by the absolute value of the suspected value minus the nearest value to the suspected value. And so this is going to be, what is the value that we are suspecting in this case from what we have? You can see all the others are like one zero something and then this one ends up being 114. So, sorry for this. Okay, so the one that we are suspecting is the 114. So this is going to be absolute value of 114. The nearest value to 114 is 107. Taking the absolute value for that. And this is going to give us 7. 
And then the next thing we find is what? The range, right? So the range, pardon me for this, just something happened. Okay, so the range, what is the symbol for range? So that's W is given by what? Highest value minus the lowest. And the highest also in this case is the guy that we are suspecting 114. The lowest is 103. And this is going to give us 11. So we find now the G calculated. And then we also find the G tabulated. So G calculated. is given by what? So that's given by the gap over the range. And the gap is 7, the range is 11, and that is going to give us 0 0.64. So let's go again on the table to find the G tabulated. How many values do we have here? We have got four values. Therefore, at 95% confidence, the value is still 0 0.829. So now compare G. Why am I even saying G? This is supposed to be Q, right? Hope we identified that. Okay, so this is Q calculated and Q tabulated. So we'll say Q calculated. Which one is bigger? So Q calculated is less than the Q tabulated. Again, we said every time what we have calculated is smaller than what we have tabulated, it means that there is no significant difference, right? And so the suspected value in this case can be ascribed to random error. So it should not be rejected. So here we are going to accept. In other words, it is a random error. So we can't discard it and that's where we end for this one in the next class we are going to talk about the f test thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and stay blessed